Hi everybody, Dacov here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do the review of a very requested item. All of you have been asking me after you've seen it on my Super Dacov Instagram profile. The Jeremy Scott for Adidas uh, basketball bag. Bag. You could, you could carry, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a handbag, it's a crossbody bag. This is how it looks like. This is a real basketball. And I've been talking to a friend of mine who is a professional basketball player, so I asked, is this a real basketball? Is it kind of a cheap basketball? Is it, um, you know, did Adidas just go really cheap and just take the cheapest basketball there is and then kind of turn it into a bag? And then he said, no, there are way cheap. Of course, there's also way better basketball qualities out there. But this is actually a very good, uh, solid quality basketball that has been used to create this bag. And it is a real basketball. It has been cut up here in a rectangular kind of shape. And then the zipper has been added. The zipper has a Adidas logo. The front has a Jeremy print. And then it says Paris backwards because we know that Jeremy either does it upside down or backwards with the Paris name. And here, very hard to see. Maybe you could see it a little bit. As I've done my haul uh, video, uh, you could check that out in the card section above. You can see it's very hard to see, but this is Jeremy's face, and it is the same face or profile that is used on his sneakers, in the tongue of his Adidas sneakers. This is gold, uh, printed with black framing, the same black that's used for the Jeremy inscription here, and this has been actually impressed into the basketball, so if you pass over it with your finger, there's like a little dent, so it's like a relief in a way. Then we have the, uh, the belt or the buckle or the, the chain or however you want to call it, uh, which is detachable. You could take it off or you could use it to wear the bag on the shoulder or crossbody. The back of the bag has the Adidas logo. Also, if you could see kind of, it has that three dimensional feel to it as well. When we unzip the bag, the inside is filled with, it's, it's like a cotton filling. Tag in there. There's like a cotton filling and the Jeremy logo is on the side. To bend this down for you to see, there it is. And then it's twisted and then sewn onto the bag. The bag also has material statement here and how to take care of it. Let's see how we can take care for this bag. It has no size, of course. It's made in Vietnam. 100% okay so main material is 100% polyurethane. The lining is 100% polyester. As far as cleaning goes, there is no cleaning happening here, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, everything is crossed over. There is no way that we can clean this bag. I mean, that we can wash this bag. We can clean it with a damp cloth for sure. This is interesting to see. I have noticed on Instagram, there are already fakes out there. And for those of you who want to kind of be on the safe side in a way, be very careful what if you buy a bag, it has to, unless you're not buying a sample, which was produced prior to the retail version, the retail version will have this coating on it. Now, what? how does this coating work? This is the month and the year this bag was produced. It was produced in the fourth month of 2015. This is the product number, AC1782. And then there's the A43010, I don't know what that is. But the product number is the second one, that's the product number you're gonna need if you're looking to purchase this bag somewhere, and that's the date it was produced. So, the fourth month of 2015. I have seen on Instagram, people posting this bag, and what I've noticed is that uh, these two, so basically, these two hooks or hinges or however you want to call them were not kind of parallel to these lines 
and to the Adidas logo or to the Jeremy name, but rather they were positioned this way. <laughs> so basically you would have this kind of handle or hook beginning here. That's a fake. So be very cautious of that. These are little uh, leather bits, or at least I think they are. They might be plastic. I'm not so sure about that. I'm talking about these. Uh... Oh my God, my camera is mirrored, so I am completely lost here, guys. There you have it. What is also interesting is this bag has these slits to, you know, get the handles out, and then the handles have been sewn in side of the bag. So if you go on the inside and you touch, you could feel you could feel this um, textile material, this one going in, and then with your hand you could feel it, but there is a cloth covering it. So it's all very well made, I have to say. I mean, the cut, the execution of the cut, eh, it's, it's a little bit tacky in a way, if you want, because it's not as straight as it could have been. But all in all, it's fine. I mean, this is a very, very, very heavy, you know, it's a, it's a heavy basketball. It's a real basketball. So to cut this and to sew it and stitch it all together, it isn't the easiest thing to do. It looks like Pac-Man. <laughs> ah! Pac-Man is going to eat me. Um, so I get it, you know, if another, you know, high-end brand would have made it, it would have been a totally different situation. The bag is not that expensive given how amazing it is. It's in the kind of 150 euro range. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a collectible piece and it's definitely a piece that goes into my design history book for sure. Um, so you could see like, you know, don't worry about like these little imperfections here in the stitching and the little bumpiness. I mean, it's a very thick basketball. They can't get it that clean for that price also. I don't know. I mean, I, I gave up looking for uh, extreme perfection when it comes to these uh, branded goods. Only with, in high-end luxury goods do I demand that because the prices are insane. If this was a Chanel bag, it would be at least 7,000 euro. So you know what I mean. For 7,000 euro, I demand perfection. Unfortunately, that's the way our world ticks for 150 euro and downwards. It's like brands expect you not to demand highest perfection. It's more like an editorial piece that photographs well. So I get it, it's not for everybody. It's been produced in limited quantities. It's still a huge price, don't get me wrong. But like on a scale from zero to six, 7,000, um, still flaws are not justified. Even if the thing was five euro, no flaws justified. But you know how the world takes, it's, it's how it takes. It's like, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, if you love the idea of it, and to me, it's more like a prototype. That's, that's the thing that justified it to me. This is more of a prototype kind of piece. The idea behind it is exceptional. So I don't mind the glitches. I actually feel that it's more handmade that way. In my personal opinion, that's fine. With this bag, not with every uh, branded good. Now let me stand up shortly, quickly. By the way, this is also from the Fall Winter 15 collection and this is the Fall Winter 15 bag too. So you could wear it like this, like that. And this strap here, you can elongate it as much as you want. This is kind of the longest it can go. It's very long. So if we're doing crossbody, it's going to hang very, very low in the back. It's really, it's on my butt, basically. <laughs> there you have it. And I kind of like it hanging that low because yeah, it gives you more like a sporty vibe or feel. It makes you feel more like a uh, real basketball is just hanging off your back. <laughs> which is kind of funny. And uh, this is a regular size of a basketball. So let me see, do I have my tape measurer anywhere? I don't. Oh no, the organization of it all. Oh well, bear with me, I'll be right back. Here it is. The shape of the basketball is kind of hard to measure, but it's a classical standard basketball. So I'm gonna open it up and try to do the cross section, more or less guys, so, you know. It's around 25 centimeters. And then the little handles are, so if I'm picking it up like this, it's approximately 18 to 19 centimeters. 
And if you make this guy here the longest possible, which is what we have here, you will have a drop of 69 to 70 centimeters. And then the shortest variation Is like this the drop in this case would be approximately 34 to 35 centimeters and if you wear it this short this is how it looks like also very wearable but I kind of see it more for ladies with this like if you're wearing it this short I don't know then the little uh, pump uh, pump well the thing to pump the air in when you when you actually put your hand in the ball and you feel the bottom of the ball there like the little thing is in there it's like the original little I don't know pumpy thing whatever you want to call it that's there as well but it's all covered up with this beautifully executed uh, lining inside in black all right guys thank you so much for watching this review before we leave let me put the ball if you see it no you don't see it okay let's leave it here uh, Murakami has a question for us, and um, the question is the following. Can't pick it up. Okay, here it is. Uh, Fadi. Hi, Fadi, by the way. Shout out to you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you have a question. Can you please show me how you roll up your sleeves? Alrighty. So, let's put Jeremy's ball <laughs> on the floor. I wore this uh, shirt... Uh, because I'm going to demonstrate it uh, to you today. So what I do is I don't really have a particular way of always rolling my shirts. I just don't like to roll them, the sleeves. I don't like to roll the sleeves like perfectly, you know. So you're not going to see me do this. You know, like perfectly rolling it up. No. What I usually do is I just push it up and then I roll it once here to block it from coming down. And so I have basically this thing sticking out that's that's how I would do it because this gives me the more natural kind of look than than I prefer this than having the preppy I, I don't like preppy so you know this rolling it up like this would be preppy to me you know I, I'm not the type <laughs> you know just rolling it keep keeping keeping it always the same length keeping it very clean and just rolling, rolling, rolling. I, I don't do that, you know. I Again, I'll show you with this sleeve. What I do is I just pull it up, do one twist here, and so this stays like open. <laughs> there you go. I know that to some, oh God, this mirrored camera, it's killing me. I know that to some this may appear messy. I, I like it this way. This, this seems just more natural to me. It makes me also feel more comfortable. Plus, this way, I avoid, so if I would be folding, you know, the sleeve constantly up like that, it would get much tighter by the time it gets here. By doing this, I avoid that tightness. I have much more room here. It doesn't, I don't, I don't feel the pressure here. I'm the type of person, I'm always very hot. Uh, <laughs> that sounded really weird right now. Um, so I, I tend to sweat a lot and I need always to feel like I can move. The second I feel pressure somewhere on my body, I start sweating and I uh, panicky. So no, don't like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, give me your opinion on the Jeremy basketball bag for Adidas. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you have any special ways that you roll up your sleeves like or do you at all? Um, because I know some people don't want to ruin their shirts because they think by rolling them up, they ruin them. So let me know, guys. Love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to share this video if you liked it. Give me a thumbs up and leave me comments in the comment section below and subscribe to see the community grow. Love you all. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So come on over, guys, and join the fun.